হ্যালো এভরি ওয়ান ওয়েলকাম ব্যাক টু হ্যালি ভেরি ওয়ান ব্রট টু ইউ বাই হ্যালি ভেরি ভালুকা বাংলাদেশ ইজ লিডিং ইন্টারন্যাশনাল স্কুল অ্যাজ ইউ নো ইন দিস শো উই হ্যাভ ডিপ কনভারসেশনস উইথ ইন্ডাস্ট্রি হেড অ্যান্ড থট লিডার্স অন ইম্পর্টেন্ট কোয়েশ্চেন্স রেলিভেন্ট ফর ডেভেলপিং ফিউচার লিডার্স আই এম এর হোস্ট জিনিয়া কবি সূচনা অ্যান্ড টু ডেস এপিসোড এক্সপ্লোর সাম কি ইস্যুস দ্যাট রান ইন দ্য মাইন্ডস অফ অল প্যারেন্টস অ্যান্ড আওয়ার কি গেস্ট ইস মিস্টার সাইমন অফ গ্রেডি দ্য হেড মাস্টার অফ হেলি ভেরি ভালুকা Ranked by 6th, the Sunday Times, and is counted among as the world's leading academically achieving schools. Simon, an alumni of the prestigious Lauder School of Economics, being over two decades of experience in international education leadership. Welcome, Simon. Thank you. I'm also personally excited to welcome the very well-known Dr. A. Sandeep, Group Strategy Director at Best Holdings Group, also the Academic Director at Halevery. Dr. Sandeep also teaches students at North South and IBA. Welcome Dr. Sir. Thank you so much. It's it's amazing to be here. Thank you. And we are firstly discussed with the requirement of formal school education. Simon and Dr. Sandeep, this is the key questions of today's show. There are a number of students who get great marks despite not going to international schools. In that case, why should parents focus on sending their children to such international schools? So this is a provocative and complex question that merits a provocative but simple answer. First, good grades are not good enough. Good grades are expected. It's those exceptional qualities that students need to access the best universities worldwide that the great schools shape and offer. Secondly, It's important to realize that this is shaped by old-fashioned thinking. The notion that a manufacturing process results in an industrial output. We've got to recognize that education for learning and assessment, they are inextricably connected. The two are not separable. And future-focused schools make sure that the two go hand in hand. Thirdly, it fails to see the converse. But over the years, thousands of students have opted out of school, not achieved good grades, and yet continued their education. And many of those individuals now lead the biggest companies, the best businesses, and indeed government departments worldwide. What do you think, Sandeep? I think... Um, there's a very deep meaning in what Simon said right now. Simon, uh, my point of view perhaps mirrors what you're saying. Uh, in my opinion, parents do look at academic results. For parents in the subcontinent, their primary focus is academic results. But unfortunately, that, that focus leads to a drive in the student to just get academic results and not develop anything else. And if we go by what you're saying, uh, in today's world, the best school education is not just that which focuses on academics but focuses on developing a child as a transformative leader uh, it's not uh, just academic results that great universities look at as you said if that were the case then we would just send our a level results to universities and say hey we've got a plus uh, we've got b we've got this let take us in but that's not what they do great universities ivy league universities russell group where our children go Uh, they are looking at the overall profile of a student and um, not only uh, result not not only result result does give a grounding no doubt about that but a a school which just focuses on that is a coaching institute and not a truly transformative educational institution uh, w- w- what do you say simon well taking my headmaster's hat off and putting my parents hat on you know I think parents have got a right to expect great grades from good schools. And, and that, that is a, a given. That is an expectation. But great schools go beyond that. And indeed, quickly putting my edu- educator's hat back on. Over the years, I've had the privilege of coaching students for Oxbridge entrance, or indeed Ivy League colleges. And it's those exceptional things those distinctive characteristics that gets them the end of the interview and it leads to successful offers of the place. That makes the difference. 
And that's what parents are really looking for. Uh, Simon and Sandeep, thank you for the responses. But there are great leaders such as uh, Edison, Einstein, uh, Walt Disney, who are also said to have dropped out of school yet achieved remarkable success. What do you have to say to do that? I think you're right. Um, many of those successful global names have dropped out of school, but none of them have dropped out of education. And each of them left school to pursue their education in different ways and indeed achieved remarkable things of global influence through the education that they then pursued. You know, sometimes schools fail their students. Sometimes daytime teachers become nighttime tutors. And that's something that we've got to fix. And we fix it by making sure that we've got a template for education in Bangladesh. Haley Bibuluko is offering that template and it is offering to shape education landscapes to make sure that it's not just the privilege of the few, but it's the right of the many. That's what great schools do. S Simon, I had a point out here. Go I on. think uh, the names you took, Edison, Einstein, Walt Disney, uh, uh, maybe they dropped out of school. Uh, uh, they're all dead. They're all from the last century. And uh, their examples perhaps hold no relevance to the modern world. Um, in the modern world, for example, if I were to talk about uh, Fortune, Fortune is a great magazine. Every year it brings out a list of uh, 500 of the world's largest corporations. So I was reading a research some time ago that, you know, I wanted to check how many of Fortune 500 CEOs have completed school education. Uh, 500 out of 500 CEOs have completed great school education and not just that, all of them are graduates. Uh, of course, not all of them are masters, but Coming back to school education, you would not find a leader of today's leading corporations or institutions claim that he's not completed schooling because that perhaps puts them on a back footing. The global world today expects absolutely robust competitive schooling, which can show that a leader has gone through at least grounding in the basic subjects and thinking, which is inquiry based. And I believe that the the last example I heard of was a person who did not complete schooling was Richard Branson, more in the contemporary era, who dropped out of school, started Virgin uh, from Britain. But these are the rarest of the rare examples. Uh, people also throw a few examples at me, Simon, like Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Bill Gates, you know, Steve Jobs, they did not complete graduation. Um, I bring them back to the point that at least they completed schooling, you know, which allowed them the independence to not complete graduation, what would you say? I think there's, there's another problem with the examples that we cite that don't represent the modern world. And it's not just that they're rooted in the 19th century, but the illustrations that we've talked about, they're all men from the West. And that is not representative of the planet that we have. We are a diverse, inclusive, and equitable world. And that's what education should represent. That's what education should en enshrine and embrace. And so the examples that we're going to pedestal, we need to make sure that diversity, that equity and inclusiveness are actually, you know, the key things that we cherish. Yeah, and that's why there is a proof of exception is not an example at all. You know, absolutely, yeah. Uh, now we are going to talk about quality of school education, Simon. And uh, I ask you, has every student almost every year stand in the top of two, uh, top of two percent of global results? How do every students have this level of high performance learning? You know, world class schools are in a category, an exceptional category of their own. Um, Halebury has over 160 years of outstanding achievement and performance. In that sense, legacy matters. But Hellybury gets and keeps great teachers. And that's the secret of its success. Difficult to join, but even harder to leave. At the cutting edge of professional learning, making sure that the teachers have that expectation 
that collective ambition to continuously improve using the latest methods for impact and drive. Yeah, you have a significant teaching background. For a student in Bangladesh, can quality of teaching inside the Halliwell classroom be really transformative? Look, well, um, you know, I sometimes uh, tell my wife that I should have been a kid now so that I could have gone to Haleybury because uh, the kind of teaching that Haleybury has, uh, once I got to know of it, I think it's mind-blowingly transformative because the tenet that makes Haleybury rank number six in the Sunday Times ranking or in the top 100 on Cambridge results or in the top 1.5% on IB results, the tenet is not that we get outstanding students in and outstanding students out. If that is the process, then the system has failed. The concept of high performance learning is that even average performers can be absolutely outstanding result getters. <laughs> For example, you know, one of um, it's an anecdotal example. So one of the kids, uh, I was just, uh, you know, I would say pulling his leg. So I asked him, okay, uh, you say that you, you've got good grades in maths. Uh, tell me what is 98 into 98. And I, I knew he wouldn't know. Uh, who can say 98 into 98? If I were to ask you, or if you were to ask the audience, they would take out a calculator or quietly, you know, do 98 into 98, our traditional system, yeah. which is the traditional performance learning, the Cambridge or any a, anyone would say will be 88 or 64 and do that. The moment I asked him what is 98 into 98, he said 9604. So I said, how did you, how, how did you know that? Because you, as much as I know, are not a genius. Yeah. You're a normal person. So he said, uh, look, uh, we've been taught in school. It's the series of 90. So write 9 and 0. Now what is 8, 8, 64? You write 6 in between 9 and 0 and 4 at the end. So what is 98 into 98? 9604. So then he asked me, all right, you tell me what is 97 into 97. If I were to ask you the same thing, you write 9 and 0. And what is seven sevens are? That's 49. So 9409. And so if I were to ask anyone now, what is 99 into 99? They would immediately say it's 9801. High performance learning is similar to this. That you transform your process of learning so that even a so-called average student brings out absolutely fantastic results. And that's the tenet of Aileybury. That's the tenet on which we believe our alumnus, our students, our whole uh, legacy stands on. Ah, Sandeep, so, and uh, as you were saying, we are uh, now discussing about uh, global education versus local resources. And uh, Simon, uh, now my question's uh, for you. Most parents in Bangladesh don't just look uh, at academic results, but also at what universities their children can go to once they pass out to of school. How well does Halliburton stand on this? It does exceptionally well. And indeed, sometimes we have to pinch ourselves to realize how well we're actually doing. And indeed, it's not a flash in the pan. It's done exceptionally well over many years. And indeed, parents who are scrupulous in their research look over a, a long period in order to understand that success is not sudden but success is achieved over a longer period. Halibri has a global record of success, both in the UK and indeed its two schools in Kazakhstan, and indeed about to in Bangladesh and Malta. And that record is based upon long-term relationships. So best curriculums, best learning methodologies, best teaching methods, best guidance and counselling and all that results in the answer to your question and for example taken together in 2023 61 percent of students who passed out of Haderby College went into Ivy League or Russell Group universities now that's a remarkable statistic and indeed it's worth sharing and indeed worth trumpeting and indeed you know we quite rightly say well done to our students, but it's all the work that's gone behind that over many years that's resulted in that super success. That's impact now. Yeah, 
and uh, Sandeep, uh, I have a question for you also, but it's break time and our discussion will go on. Don't go anywhere, stay with us. Welcome again, Hello Very One, brought to you by Hello Very Bhaluka. As I told you, I have a question for you, Sandeep. Dr. Sandeep, bringing world-class education to Bangladesh has been your background. You brought to Bangladesh the historic London School of Economics and Monash Study Centers. With Haley Berry, what more can students expect in terms of world-class education? You know, one of their parents asked me the same thing, and uh, they were very clear what they wanted. Uh, they said that, look, Christopher Nolan is your alumnus. Can you get him to Bangladesh? And that is world class that I can get. But but seriously speaking, uh, what we are bringing to Bangladesh in terms of world class education is number one, Haleybury. Uh, as a brand, uh, it stands number one in Bangladesh, and it's you know it's uh, I've never seen in the history of Bangladesh a school opening as the number one school, and Haleybury stands tall uh, on these grounds. More importantly, uh, if I were to tell you that. Uh, on at the end of this month, we are organizing the first Harvard Summer School Information Program for student registrations, uh, and that's with Harvard University. Jointly, Haleybury is organizing. Never has happened ever in Bangladesh. Uh, next year, we are bringing in the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MID, for a proper summer camp hackathon at the Haleybury Bhaluka campus in June to be precise, and that's again open to all the students. And it doesn't cost that much, and the learning is amazing, outstanding. So when you say world class, at number one, I would say it's Haleybury itself. Number two, we are bringing learning from the world's greatest institutions right at the doorstep of our Bangladeshi students who are absolutely world class on their own, and that's what we are bringing uh, on the table. We are going to uh, discussing a uh, very important issue, safeguarding of children, Simon. And I ask you a question. Bangladesh doesn't have formal children's safeguarding policies. How will Haleybury work towards ensuring safety of children in your boarding school, which is a spread of 100 acres? Great question and a really important question for the nation. And indeed, the good news is we've started already through the incredible work of the British Council and their recent uh, safeguarding summit which brought together 200 schools at one event. We've already committed to a common purpose across the country. And that purpose is about setting same standards, achieving common policies, and indeed sharing best practices. We've already launched a new organization, Be Safe, the Bangladesh Safeguarding Alliance for Educators. And this is going to be an agency for change and safeguarding across the nation. We are determined to make sure that every school is a safe haven for learning and achievement. Now, to address your question, we make sure that we've got high standards. We look after our children and care is the most important thing. And in doing so, we make sure that our standards are strong, our systems are safe, and indeed that we're accountable for them. So we are inspected internationally and we make sure that guidance given is acted on straight away. But we are not in any way overconfident and aloof on these matters. We are always listening and we're always receptive to new ideas. Safeguarding matters more than anything else in schools and Haley Beluka leads the way. Yeah. And uh, now uh, we are discussing about uh, educating the educated. And uh, Simon and Sandeep, while talking about school education, uh, we sometimes forget that the teachers are the ones who also need more education. How is Hellyby reacting that? Well, George Bernard Shaw once famously said, those who can, do. And those that can't, teach. Well, Hellyby educators are those that create a can-do culture, enabling our students to have the values, skills and qualities to succeed in a future-ready world. We invest a great deal 
in recruiting our teachers. We are meticulous in selecting the best teachers in the world, but we invest even more in keeping them. So for example, we have recently formed a unique partnership with Harvard University. And that means that every one of our teachers is going to be Harvard certified upon joining. We are setting the highest standards to make sure that our teachers have the greatest impact with our students, and indeed to make sure that our teachers are with us for a very long time. Okay, thank you. I think this is um, unbelievable to, to say, put it mildly, you know, uh, Shuchana, if I can, if I can put it across it, how is it possible that you have a school in Bangladesh which is claiming that all its teachers are Harvard certified? Yeah. Not just that. All these teachers who teach in our classroom are backed by something we call evidence-based education. The concept of evidence-based education is very scholarly. It's at a PhD level, which means that anything that you teach in the class cannot be your personal opinion, cannot be based on unreliable sources, it has to be backed by absolutely well-cited, well-documented uh, you know, information so that what the children are reading is something that the world has already accepted. So evidence-based education, high-performance learning, the concept of each and every teacher without, I mean, any exception being Harvard certified, I don't think even other schools in the world are doing it, leave alone a school in Bangladesh. And, and that is what I would say is educating the educated. Thank you, Dr. Sandeep. Thank you, Simon, for sharing your insights and experiences on the education, on the formal education. It's been a delightful conversation. And to our viewers, thank you for being with us on Heliberry One, brought to you by Heliberry Bhaluka, Bangladesh's premier leading international school. Remember, education is not just about knowledge. It's been, it's about shaping lives. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning. Goodbye.